Good morning, everybody. It is a very windy day, but sunny. So we are going to attempt our full brand new retooled battery maximum EV range test this morning. I can put up numbers on this side. Uh, the last test we did, I don't have them yet somewhere. Uh, 50 point something kilometers was the maximum we could get. And that was when the battery was down around 34 amp hours. Last September, we hit 60 kilometers, and that would have been probably somewhere around 36 point something amp hours at that point. So this will be the first test, full 38.1 amp hour battery this morning. Let's see what we can do. There's a quick look at the dog stats. We are charged to 98.7%. So we did uh, charge this last night. So we're actually sitting at 37.6 again. You know, it is, I mean, that is an issue, but uh, one step at a time, right, Mitsubishi? Gasometer is showing a range of 43 kilometers. We're definitely going to beat that. And we've got 15 degrees Celsius out there this morning and zero kilometers on our tripometer. I always feel like a commercial jet pilot when I'm getting ready to take off in this thing. All these things to check, switches to click, passengers to uh, calm down, keep a bottle of rye in the back. That's the best thing you can do. So no heat or heated seats this morning. Uh, we're just gonna run this as far and long as we can, usual test parameters. I did wanna mention a couple things. Uh, as I'll show you guys, we do have a yellow card in uh, the watchdog to show you guys that I did in fact get a reset yellow card this time around. So we did get the DB cam, the full reset, 100%, 38 amp hours is what it's showing on the yellow card. We know that the car did, in fact, receive a full DB cam and reset. I'm being told that the battery didn't go up to 40 amp hours because they would have had to reset the date and age of the battery for that to happen. So that then the car thinks it has a brand new battery. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, I will ask the dealership. They're not going to know, but I'll throw that information to Kyle and maybe uh, apparently that's a pretty quick fix so maybe they could do that for me as well maybe we'll gain an extra two amp hours there and for some reason on yesterday's video i still got a thumbs down even when i bring you guys good news so thanks for that whoever that guy was yes maybe i'm being a little over optimistic but we've got to start somewhere right guys so i know that this isn't the end all cure however i just want to say I would accept this as a cure if under three conditions if the battery continued to drop at the rate it is right now which is I've seen 0.1 amp hours in the last month and a half okay so I would accept that as a as a drop rate the second condition would be that Mitsubishi is not going to charge me for this nowhere when I signed up for this did it say hey your battery needs conditioning every year by the way and we're gonna charge you 150 to 300 dollars what I've heard numerous numbers thrown around so I don't know what the number is so that's the second condition this has to be free guys you want me to drive your car then the battery conditioning has to be free um, the third condition I forget what the hell the third condition was <laughs> I'm just gonna go through the drive through here and get a coffee because maybe maybe then I'll remember what that third condition was we're going with the large coffee this morning. Okay, coffee reviving my brain. The third condition was that this uh, battery smoothing and everything has to be made available once a year. Okay, so if Mitsubishi says, yeah, every three years we can do that for you, that's not good enough. You've got to give us the option to bring this car in and have uh, the reset and the smoothing done annually and not charge us for it. Then I would consider this a win. It really, it's not the it's not the right fix. The right fix would be a firmware update, but are we going to get that? Uh, that might be a, a battle to, to get that according to what uh, they released in those papers last week. And this has been a five year problem. Now, of course, there are, you know, a few of us making it more of a known issue. It wasn't as known before. So maybe, maybe things will change on that front, but Maybe not. So I'll mention it in this video again because I mention it in all of the other ones. These maximum EV range tests are a little bit unrealistic. 
I try to do between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour wherever I can, which is just in town simulated traffic driving conditions. So if I can coast more and there's nobody behind me and I can coast right down to 35 kilometers an hour, that's what we do. It's an unrealistic driving test to see how much kilometers we can squeeze out of the battery. And if you don't know that Gary uses B0 as his preferred driving style, you're not watching enough Unfrequented World. Uh-oh, what's he doing? No, Gary, what are you doing? That's right. I am picking up my wife some information on the PHEV Crosstrack. Mitsubishi has not sent me a new 2019 for testing and uh, to own and drive and take care of and love. So I guess I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands and uh, get some Subaru Crosstrack pamphlets. My wife drives the Crosstrack right now, the regular one. She loves it. And uh, this would be our fifth Subaru if that's the route we end up going. We don't know which way we're going to go. We've got a year here to decide. I just want to get some pricing and uh, they should have pamphlets available now. So that's what we're going to do. Well, that's shocked to put it plainly. Um, I picked up pamphlets or information six months ago from Subaru when I was I brought her car in to get some work done and uh, They were supposed to be out in June and now they've revamped everything and the guy here is saying they're not bringing the Crosstrack PHEV to Canada until 2021 I feel like my hands are a little bit tied on that front. So maybe we'll just have to make her car last a little bit longer. So I guess Mitsubishi, if you want to send me that 2019, <laughs> damn, burning bridges. Ah. <laughs> I should mention that we have a viewer from Germany who has made a couple of posts in the past. And this time uh, on the last video, he posted, see, I've been telling you guys all along, the battery thing is nothing to worry about. He says that in Germany, they can go in whenever they want and the cell procedures are free. So I highly um, assume <laughs> that's not going to be the case here in Canada. Again, that's just an assumption, but we'll find out as we go. And maybe I'm the only guy in the world who would say this, but I, when I say this, I honestly mean it. Yesterday at the dealership, they said to me, um, you know, your car is ready. I went in to pick it up. Uh, he gave me the paperwork. We went out. We hooked up the dog. We looked at it. And then as we went back into the building, I said, oh yes, and I still owe you guys from the oil change and the, all of the things I had done before. And my service manager said, no, no, I took care of that. And to me, I don't know, like, I, I don't want something for free. That's not why I'm complaining. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to give me free service. If I get something done to the car, I expect to pay for it. Anyway, the point being, I don't want to say, you know, I understand that the dealership is saying, hey, here's a here's a peace offering because we've inconvenienced you. Well, it's an inconvenience for sure that I've had to bring the car in three times, but it's a learning curve and I understand that. And I agreed to be part of that learning curve. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't want free work. I don't want free things given to me that are what am I saying? What's going to happen is they gave me this stuff for free, but then I'm going to end up paying X amount for the battery service when it should be completely the other way around. It should be, hey, you needed these things done to your car, pay for them like a normal person. However, Mitsubishi should step up and say, this battery issue is completely ours. We're going to take ownership of that and we're not going to charge you for that. Then I would be, I don't know, my morality, I have a morality system that's just weird. And uh, I don't know, I, it, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not explaining myself very well, but uh, I just, that's how I feel about it. You know what, if I, my car needs an oil change, I pay for that. Um, if you give me something I didn't ask for, you pay for that. If Mitsubishi has an issue that's reoccurring and can't be addressed through a firmware fix, you pay for that. I guess that's where I'm going with this. Also, it's been requested that as soon as the engine kicks on this morning that I show the voltage levels um, on the PHEV Watchdog app. Uh, I forget the username who asked me to do that, but I will do that. And the reason for that is they're suggesting 
that what happens with these batteries that are not new and they get this reset done, um, we actually were just dipping down into the reserve of the battery. So the battery gets drained a little bit more because the um, BMU does not know the true level of the battery. So what happens is the uh, battery uses some of its reserve. The voltages are therefore a little lower and we're not really uh, back to a new battery state by getting this reset done. That's one of the theories. So I will happily show that screen. You guys can figure that part out. That being said, I've got to assume that a one-year-old battery here is going to be pretty good, that it should actually give us more range without dipping into that reserve. And if that's not the case, then Mitsubishi you really do have a hardware issue. And I guess that's what everyone is trying to figure out. Either way, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll show the screen and you guys can figure that part out. Okay, gasometer is showing just bars. So any second now we are gonna have the engine fire up. I noticed this last time that they worked on my battery as well, that uh, when the gasometer hit bars, I went a lot farther than I normally do. So there, it is doing some extra calculating here going, oh wait, we made a mistake. He's still got electric, keep going. Because usually within a kilometer of, uh, there goes the engine right there. I heard it click. 56.6 kilometers guys. So right in between the previous two tests. Still showing 100%. 13.4 kilowatt hours, so you can see I really did baby this. And if we look at the uh, watchdog, we're gonna go directly to voltage. 3.79 is the minimum voltage, 3.8 is the maximum voltage, right after the engine started. So I'm not sure uh, what else to show you on there, but that's the voltage screen. I guess I should have showed you guys this screen too. So the engine's been running for about a minute now and we're at 31.8%. Well, there you go. I break for turtles. Well, good day to you too, sir. You're in my driveway, move along. So a couple of things to note with this trip. Right off the bat, I knew that I babied this even more than the last test. The kilowatt hour usage on the dash showed that and so do the dog numbers. So the top one here is today's trip and it was recording after the engine started. That's why it doesn't show 100%. But uh, one hour 54 minutes is what it took. But look at this. If we look at our actual speeds, look at this right here. If we look at our speeds, our average speed was 27 kilometers an hour. And that's because I went out early this morning, there wasn't as much traffic, and I just coasted as far as I could. Maximum speed was 64. We look at our coast number, 34.8%. 6.4% regenerated. And here's what we used, 34.6 amp hours. Wait a second, why is this showing? This is showing that we went from 34.6 down to 12.6. This is not showing the 37 point whatever we started with. I'm confused, look at this right here guys. This is the charge at the beginning of the trip according to the watchdog and the charge at the end of the trip. It's still showing 34.6. But when we started this morning, that's not the number we had. It was 37 something. And that's today's trip right here. 34.6. What is up with that? So in summary, I went further than the last test, but I babied the car more and um, we were more efficient. And the numbers from the dog and the dash showed us that. So yes, we're gonna get more distance here, but again, there's something, this is not the same battery that I had last year when I had 38.1 amp hours. Um, 
it seems to me there was actually more power in there. So is there something right with what these guys are saying? Maybe this isn't all software. Maybe this is hardware. It's going to take more tooling around, more tests to figure out what's really going on here. But it was not easy for me today to get 56.6 kilometers. I could not get 60. There is no way I could get 60. But I can tell you guys right now, I'm not going as far on this battery as I was last September. And in September, we definitely didn't have 38 amp hours. I can look that up actually right now on that trip where we did 60 kilometers. This is the trip where we got 63 kilometers um, in September. And if we look at this trip, Right here, I want to look. Our average speed was 40.4 and our maximum was 58. So the average speed was quite a bit higher. I know that in today's trip, I babied the car even more than I did on this trip. Look at our battery though. This confuses me a little bit. It says 35.1 amp hours down to 11.5. So the battery drained further according to this. But it's not as high as I would have thought it would have been. We bought the car in April. This test was done in September. Uh, September 17th to be exact. So again, we had 47.2% uh, coasting there as well on that trip. So I don't know what's going on guys, but all I can say is that today's test with a fully revamped battery, we didn't get these numbers. We were short by uh, seven kilometers. And I babied the car a lot more than I did on this test in September. Does this mean that we are actually having some kind of hardware issue as well? That the batteries um, are not holding what they say they're holding? What the computer is telling us it's holding, it's really not? Uh, I mean, these tests are not definitive, right? These are, this is just a, a driving style. We didn't set the cruise at a set amount and go that distance and even if you did that road conditions weather conditions traffic conditions all of that is going to change everything so i don't know how to do a better test than what i'm doing even with a fully revamped battery i am not going as far as i was last september for that i am 100 percent sure what else can i say at this point i don't know a lot more testing needs to be done here something's not as it seems I do not have, I do not believe the same amount of energy is in that battery as what it's showing. Uh, something's going on here. I don't know what, but definitely not going as far as I was uh, nine months ago.